Niantic's Main Street sits halfway between New York and Boston, a bustling downtown that has been busy bringing in new business. For some, one gumdrop at a time. What is it like to own a candy slash ice cream store? Yeah, it's amazing, it's fun, it's a lot of work but it's a lot of fun. Melinda Grouse vacationed in Niantic as a child and in 2008 moved here with her own family. We just wanted to be down in this area right along the water. So that's where we came and my husband is an avid fisherman, so it just works. She wanted to find the perfect spot for her sweet dream. Turns out the perfect spot found her. It just was literally standing in front of the building, turned around and there was a hidden rental sign there and I was like, oh my gosh, let's start here. Gumdrops and Lollipops has been serving up the sweet things in life for 15 years, fueled by Melinda's own childhood memories. I ate candy a lot as, as a child. And I know candy always just, it was that feel good, I love candy, and it just always put that smile on my face. Her homemade fudge, nostalgic nuggets, and jars of goodness certainly do bring the smiles. I got a rip roll. What is a rip roll? It's a, a roll-out candy and apparently it's 40 inches of fun. From the gooey and chewy and sugary sensations to the luscious lick of homemade ice cream. Named after the sites that surround this happy place. Minty McCook's, it's because we have McCook's Park right in back of us. We have Saunders Point Pistachio, Niantic train tracks because we have the train tracks right in back of the store. 36 flavors. Black Point Raspberry oh, yeah. Chip. Mmm. Now that's a taste of Niantic. Customers so busy enjoying these cool creations, words are hard to come by. Do you like ice cream? <gasps> we get it, Riley. <laughs> we all scream for ice cream. Just a stone's throw from Niantic, high on a hill overlooking the serene landscape of Waterford, what many call the launch pad of American theater. It's known for just vision. It's known for being you know, non-judgmental. I think it's a safe space for actors to come, for dancers to come, artistic people to come and find their craft. The Eugene O'Neill Theatre Center was founded by local resident George White. He studied theatre at Yale, performed in the military alongside Elvis Presley, built a career in the arts before finding his way home and to this farmland in 1965. He lived right down the street and so we needed to do something more for the theatre. So he's decided to start building a little campus for actors to go, people that were into cinematography, were into puppetry, were into dance, were into music. Like founding members and puppeteers Rufus and Margot Rose, also of Waterford. You might remember the Howdy Doody show. Rufus was the man pulling the strings, and Margot sculpted many of the show's marionettes. Speaking of puppets, Jim Henson and his wife dedicated this building, green of course, both participants at the O'Neill's Institute of Professional Puppetry Arts. The O'Neill Center hosts conferences in musical theater, playwriting, and cabaret. Playbills hang from one of the campus's social centers. All of the creators came here to perform, perfect, to grow. All the little pieces that go into it, if you're working on stage crews, and if you're working on lighting, if you're working on sound. Without the O'Neill, there may have never been a Hamilton. In 2004, Lynn manuel Miranda, Hamilton's creator, submitted In the Heights to the O'Neill Center. It would go on to win four Tonys, give him the Broadway credentials to expand his work. There's many shows that are on Broadway now, like Shucked. Two summers ago here, I just saw him right in that barn behind me. So people can come here and see the shows? We see the show ahead of time and watch them work on the specific skills to make it a Tony Award winning performance. The same stage area that Michael Douglas built when he was a kid. You heard that right. Long before Michael Douglas would dance with the Hollywood elite, he would work at the O'Neill. He didn't arrive an actor, but he left as one. Rode his motorcycle from California at 18 years old, made his way here. He worked on the grounds, and one day someone asked him, hey, we need help, can you be an extra? He said yes, and from there it was history. The O'Neill provides a quiet place for art to thrive, for artists from playwrights to actors to make final edits, 
on performances that will long influence American culture. It's one of these, these small little pieces to a puzzle that make the entertainment business and Broadway such an incredible journey for so, so many of these artists. The Eugene O'Neill Theater Center also offers a semester as part of the National Theater Institute where students spend 10 hour days, seven days a week working with masters of the craft in all elements of theater. Oh, and those tickets to see a Broadway show before its Broadway debut, just $20. Still ahead, ditching the paddle for your feet.